Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and what I have for you here is a nice, interesting geometry problem. Now, if you're taking like high school level geometry, or maybe you've already completed high school level geometry, this is certainly a problem that you should be able to do without too much difficulty. But the question is, we want to find the value of x. Okay, so what is x? Well, let's take a look at the figure. So we uh, have a right triangle. And then we here, we looks like we have a triangle within a triangle. The height of this triangle is 9. And then the base, we don't really have the base, but we do see that x is this length right here. Okay, and then here, the rest of the base is 4. So this is enough information to figure out what the value of x is or the length of x given this information. So I don't want to give you too many hints here because I want to give you the full opportunity to solve this thing all on your own. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find the link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So again, uh, what is the value of X? We're specifically looking for this length right here. Well, the answer is X is equal to eight. So this is not that scary of an answer. In other words, we didn't get something like the square root of seven or something like that. You sometimes you just never know what the answer is going to look like. That's why you really have to have a lot of confidence in every single step you take in the solution. Because once you do uh, arrive to a final answer, you need to kind of you know be confident in that answer. But anyways, if you got x is equal to eight, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about what? Well, we're talking about similar triangles, okay? So this is not to be um, confused with congruent triangles or con congruent figures or similar figures. Let's just talk about the difference right now. Okay, so if I have uh, two exact uh, shapes, uh, let's say uh, I have a triangle and here's an exact copy of that triangle then we're talking about congruency, and that's an exact uh, copy of a figure or a triangle, whatever it might be, okay? So you don't want to confuse that what, uh, with similarity. Similarity is the concept of here you have a figure, but if I enlarge this figure or I zoom out, for example, or, or if I take a figure and I zoom it in, it's basically the same object. You just make a smaller or bigger version of it. These are similar figures or similar triangles. So this is the situation that we're really kind of dealing with. So you don't want to confuse those terms. And again, you know, congruency and similarity, huge, huge topics in geometry. So let's go ahead and get into the um, actual problem. And the main idea of this is to recognize that, in fact, we are dealing with two similar triangles, okay? So let's go ahead and put our little right triangle uh, thing right here. So uh, now why are, are these uh, similar, okay? Well, you have different theorems, uh, you know, and postulates that determine whether two triangles are similar, okay? So here we they share an angle, right? So this smaller triangle, ha they have the same angle, right? So the outside triangle and the inside uh, triangle have the same angle and they have this angle in common as well which is the right angle so in other words these uh, two triangles have the exact same measure right because this angle right in here has to be the same right so if this is 90 this is 90 and here they share the same angle well then basically you have the exact same triangle just a smaller version or a larger version of it and again this is uh, basically uh, establishes that these two triangles are similar. Okay, so, but what does that mean? Well, similar figures, their lengths, the respective lengths are in proportion. Okay, so there's a lot of different kind of theorems and postulates that you want to know. But generally speaking, if you have two similar figures, what you kind of really need to remember is that their respective lengths are in proportion. And that's going to be the secret to unlocking uh, the solution here. So let's go ahead and take a look 
at the scenario this way, okay? So here is our problem, right? So here is the big triangle, has a height of nine, and then this is X and this is four. But before we do that, let's take a look at this inside triangle right here, okay? So here is, so I'm gonna just kind of break out this part, this triangle, and I'm gonna put it right here. So we can kind of compare. Here's the smaller triangle, here's the bigger triangle. So its height is six, its base is X, okay? So effectively, uh, when we look at this, the, these heights right here, these are the height, this is the height of the triangle, okay? This length and this length, okay? And then the base is what? Well, the base of this smaller triangle is X, but the base of this la uh, larger triangle is not X, it's what? It's X plus four. We have a four here and an X here. So this expression, X plus four, is the base of this triangle. So what we can do is establish a proportion, and that's what we want to do to figure this out. Let me go ahead and just erase this right here. So here is the port, uh, proportion I set up. Okay, now let's uh, see if you can see what I'm doing here. I have six over X is equal to nine over X plus four. Okay, so six over X is equal to X plus four. So what did I do? Well, let's go back up here and take a look at this. So here I'm comparing the height to the base. So this would be six over X. Okay, so this is what we call a ratio. And that's gonna be the same thing, this height to the base as to the height right here, which is what, nine, to the base, which is what, X plus four. Okay, now I just got done uh, doing a video, well, maybe oh, three, four days ago on the importance of putting parentheses around expressions of sums and differences, especially when there's a variable involved. So for example, I didn't have to put parentheses around uh, X plus four, okay? But it's really important that if you do have a sum, i.e. you're adding something or subtracting something with the variable, get in the habit of putting parentheses around that expression as it will uh, save you a lot of heartache. A, a lot of students make a common error. I'll kind of get into the error in just one second. But uh, anyways, this is what we're going to do. We're going to um, solve this proportion, okay? Because again, when you have similar figures or similar triangles, the respective sides are in proportion. In other words, if we compare any two sides, here we're comparing the height to the base, to the height to the base, then those uh, uh, fractions are equal. So now what we need to do is simply solve this proportion with some basic algebra. All right, so here is our proportion. I wanna give you a chance to solve this just in case you didn't know uh, what to do, but uh, obviously you solved the answer is X is equal to eight. So go ahead and see if you can come up with that if you wanna pause the video and just check this part of the problem out all on your own. But let's go ahead and get into the problem or the actual solution, excuse me. All right, so here's our proportion. And again, a uh, proportion is two equal fractions. And again, just real basic math here. If I have one half, there's a fraction, right? And let's just think of another fraction that's equal to one half. How about five over 10? Remember the cross products are always true when you have a proportion, i.e. two equal uh, two equal fractions. In other words, uh, one times 10 is equal to two times five or 10 is equal to 10. So with that in mind, we can just simply cross multiply here. We got one fraction equal to another fraction. So we can use the cross product to solve this thing. Okay, so here is where the algebra can get interesting. So let's just do the easy part first. So uh, X times nine is simply nine X. No problem there. But here we're going to multiply six times X plus four. Now I made it easy for you because six times X plus four is this. But what if I said, what if we didn't have those parentheses there, right? So some uh, students can confuse this. It's actually a very common mistake. They go, oh, that's six times X plus four, and then I'll just write six X plus four. Okay, that's not uh, six times X plus four. Okay, what six times X plus four is, you have to have this sum in uh, these parentheses because we're gonna have to use the distributive property, okay? So in other words, uh, let's just make sure we know where we're at right now, right? Here is the cross product, nine times X is nine X. Six times uh, X plus four is this expression. Now we have to continue forward. And here, this is a clear indication 
that we have to use the distributive property. So 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 4 is 24 is equal to 9x. And now we can simply solve this basic equation right here. So this uh, time, what I'm going to do, okay, and I'm uh, speaking for those of you that uh, may have watched some of my other videos, typically when you're solving equations, you want to get your variables to your left and your numbers to your right. Now, I can move like my 9x over to the left here, okay, but what's going to end up happening is I got to move my number over to the right. So that's like two moves. So what I could do, I'm like, well, I got my number right here all by itself. I could just move my variable over to the right hand side. So I'm going to have my number equal to a variable. It just saves me a little bit of work. So as long as you can kind of, you know, uh, you know, control the problem that way or see what's going on, uh, it's perfectly fine to uh, make this your one single step that we need to take here. So we're going to subtract 6x from both sides and we, we end up with our variable term on the right hand side of the equation. That's perfectly fine. It's just saving us a little bit of work here. So here we have 24 is equal to 3x. So how do we solve for x? Simply divide both sides of the equation by 3. So 24 divided by 3 is 8. x is equal to 8. Okay, so again, you know, we're talking about similar figures, similar triangles, uh, setting up proportions, solving proportions. So obviously we're using algebra to solve a geometry problem. That's why 99.9% .9 of the times, uh, when you take, let's say, for example, high school mathematics, you're going to take algebra, generally, let's say, algebra one. Okay, that would be your algebra one course. And then after that comes geometry, because you do need um, algebra knowledge and skills to take on, let's say, high school level geometry. So if you need help with any of this, especially the geometry uh, a part of it, I would directly um, uh, um, have you go to my geometry uh, course, my full geometry course. I teach you everything you need to know at the high school level, you know, uh, in terms of uh, geometry, okay, which is proofs much, much more than this. But anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.